Spring Boot was generally available from April 2014. I got introduced to Spring Boot only from 2016 and I have been inspired, amazed and rejuvenated since then. I even started to learn, code and share the same via tech primers. Some days I absolutely loved working with it and some days I hated working with it. In this video, I am going to share my take on some of the bests and the worst of Spring Boot. Spring Initializer provides an easy way for us to quick start our Spring Boot journey by creating different projects based on the type of build tool, language and the version we can customize the way we want our application to be created. In addition to that we can select different dependencies. Using the dependencies we will be able to connect Spring Boot to different platforms, databases, standards and much more. Creating a project is much simpler. We can just download the package, open it up in our favorite IDE and the structure for the Spring Boot application is sorted. Spring Boot follows a clean standard practice with sources present inside the source main folder and the tests present inside the source test folder along with properties under resources folder. It is also neatly arranged with pom.xml's definition of parent configuration for Spring Boot. In addition to that, the dependencies which we are going to add into our Spring Boot application. Since Spring Boot has its own dependencies managed inside the Spring Boot starter parent, we can now mention only the artifact ID and the group ID and we don't have to mention the version number. Spring Boot provides rich support for various cloud platforms and microservices patterns and libraries. The Spring Cloud Services library projects have tons of libraries to choose from and you can use it in creating a cloud native microservice architecture. There are libraries for every microservices architectural pattern at its disposal. Spring Cloud Services is the Swiss army knife of Spring Boot. Spring Cloud Services adds abstraction and creates seamless experience for new users to integrate new libraries. For instance, let's take a look at Spring Cloud for Amazon Web Services. There are samples which are handy in comparing our implementation with a reference implementation which shows that adding annotations and Java based bean injections help in creating an implementation of Amazon SQS seamlessly with minimal effort and learning curve. Spring Boot is already a containerized version of a web application. With Spring Boot, the embedded Tomcat acts as a web container for our application to function and serve requests from the consumers. Spring community is one of the most active and the widespread community which is powered by longtime Spring fans and Java champions. You can get to know about Spring issues and resolutions via Stack Overflow with the power of Google search in your fingertips. Finally, Spring Boot is very easy to learn. It's one of the best frameworks which can kickstart your microservices journey in a matter of minutes if not hours. There are amazing guides which can walk you through stepwise approach in implementing a specific feature which covers end-to-end -end implementation samples to get you started. There are Spring Tips videos uploaded by Josh Long under Spring Developer YouTube channel which can help you with quick tweaks and tips in working with Spring Cloud Libraries and the Spring Boot Framework itself. 
before we head into the verse of springboard if you feel that there are something which i missed and which is in your top list do mention that in the comment section below in my initial spring boot journey i had literally struggled hours to days to figure out why a specific runtime exception is thrown there are so many transitive dependencies which are resolved during runtime and it creates more hurdle for us to rely on testing the application end to end however most of us had to learn it the hard way exclusions were our saviors and to identify those exclusions we will have to rely on a feature to fail the build or fail the test due to version incompatibilities this is in general dependency hell which we have to deal with the libraries in every language while spring boot helps in easy quick start it adds much more pain when the boot up time adds to your existing list of worries there are explanations on why and who is causing this slowness and some of which can be addressed by little tweaks in the way the application operates but still you will have to deal with these by default even a hello world application takes more memory at run time due to the huge number of classes which are loaded in the jvm when we load more and more libraries and entities in the application we tend to create a monolith which takes more time to start up and more memory to consume again there are some tweaks available to fix some of the memory performances but still not all issues are addressed as they are dependent mostly on the architecture and the vm finally spring boot has a closely knit usage of spring based annotations to make it quick for beginners however these are different from the java standards and representations in some cases where migrating from spring to jsr based implementations are more painful and never ending there are new frameworks like quarkus which are providing easy way for applications to move to jsr standards with minimal change and better performance in a new polyglot vm environment like graal vm Those are some of my best and the worst of Spring Boot. What feature did you like or dislike the most? As always, if you like the video, like and share with your peers. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. Meet you again in the next video. Thank you very much.